Then we have, as I was saying, what is called a content security firewall, which is nothing else but an application firewall. Um, so we, it's a very specific kind of firewall. It's in line, likewise, it, it's in all cases, it's going to be deployed in line within the system communication, but it's going to be dedicated for specific protocol inspection. Because like, like for example, a firewall, a regular firewall can also not regular uh, a common firewall nowadays can also do deep packet inspection but it lacks the feature the, the required feature to actually not only be able to do deep packet inspection of a specific uh, protocol but also take specific actions and enforce specific uh, specific let's say restriction and accesses uh, of uh, to the network so Deep packet inspection is, is performed for protocol conformance with RFC and also strict security policies. So this kind of security firewall is going to have two scopes. It's going to be dedicated for usually one or a couple of protocols, but in general one specific protocol. And it's going to make sure that all traffic of that protocol flowing through the, through the firewall is going to be conf in conformance with uh, the RFC and also is going to enforce strict security policies of the users being able to uh, use that, to make use of that protocol or not. As internet communication heavily relies on two protocols, which is HTTP or HTTPS and SMTP, which um, uh, which means those are the most uh, the, the most commonly used attack vectors. Why is that? Because clearly, if an attacker doesn't uh, have the let's say the tools or the options or the chance or doesn't want to, or for whatever reason he can the attacker cannot gain physical access to the network, then it mean it ha it means that in order for the attacker to get somehow I in the network to to um, infect endpoints to get to get access to endpoints in order to be able to look around in the network and try to leak data sensitive data out of the network it means that the attacker has to um, has to manage to put in the network that 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 malware somehow remotely and because most users, like most companies, allow access to the internet for the users back and forth in order to browse, so HTTP, HTTPS, and to send emails, then there we go. That's why most of the attacks are happening over uh, HT over web or over uh, email. So based on these facts, clearly, which is, means that we're going to have uh, two most commonly used kind of security uh, files, which is going to be one is going to be the web firewall which is going to inspect HTTP and HTTPS sessions from the user stores the internet. That's also known as a proxy or a, a web proxy. Like for example, looking at our use case in here. So if this is again the internet border with LAN and internet. It means that if I want to control all traffic to the internet, all HTTP and HTTPS traffic, not at the IP level, but our other controllers are going to see, we're going to speak in more details uh, probably tomorrow. As I want, for example, a user on test PCA, I would want a user on test PCA to be able to browse to, let's say, google.com. Let me use black for this. So I want user at user test PCA to be able to browse google.com. But I would not want the user to be able to browse uh, whatever website, like for example, um, I don't know, let's say something simple, xyz.com. I would not want the user to be able to access this specific URL. Although I can do, I can configure this policy also at, a f at the firewall level, at ASA3 level, First of all, I lack a lot of other features, which we're going to speak in more details uh, tomorrow, that uh, the web proxy has. So the SA file doesn't have as many features for the HTTP inspection as the specific 
uh, web proxy firewall has. And also the deep packet inspection of HTTP packets and SMTP packets is gonna cause a huge uh, performance impact on, the f on that firewall. So I don't want that file to become a bottleneck. So because also as you're gonna see uh, tomorrow, I also need specific other features on my web security, uh, web proxy, on my web uh, security firewall, which are not available in most regular firewalls, then I wanna have a dedicated solution for uh, for uh, for restricting users' access towards the internet, which users are allowed to browse which sites, and so on. So what's going to happen? I'm going to make use of a specific appliance, which is going to be my proxy, my web proxy. I'm going to put it in here in the network as a black box, like for example, router one. There's going to be my web proxy, web security appliance. And how this is going to work is that any web traffic flowing from the network towards the internet, like test PCA, is going to send its request to this web proxy saying, hey, I want to access a specific resource at google.com. And then that specific appliance is going to let me, is going to allow me to access that resource, yes or no. If it's going to allow me to access that resource, that appliance is going to go and grab the content for Google.com in my name, from in, in, in my name. So the appliance, the web security solution goes to Google.com, like here being a Google.com, goes and grabs the content and it delivers to the user the content. So the, it, it's of course a lot of a lot of configuration options, but in general, the user like TestPCA never speaks directly with Google.com. The user speaks with the web with, with the web security firewall, and if the web security firewall allows the user to access that resource, then the web security firewall is going to go grab the content and deliver it back to the user. So there's going to be no direct connection between the user and the website is trying to access um, in the end. That's going to be the web security appliance or the web uh, firewall. Likewise, because SMTP is the next attack vector and most commonly used protocol in the internet, then uh, and most commonly used the traffic uh, of the users towards the internet from the internet, we're going to have also the email firewall for SMTP traffic, which is also known as the SMTP gateway. We're going to speak in more details about this, but like for example, what's going to happen is that all all uh, all traffic, all email traffic leaving the network from the LAN, so exiting towards the internet, or all SMTP traffic coming from the internet is going to go to this specific appliance. So I'm going to have somewhere in here connected to the firewall that SMTP gateway. or the email firewall, the SMTP firewall. So all, all traffic, all SMTP traffic, all email traffic flowing back and forth from the LAN towards the internet is gonna go to this appliance. Like when test PCA, of course the chain of events can be uh, way bigger and longer and more complex, but in general what test PCA is gonna do, when, used, when this user wants to send an email to uh, uh, a Google account, for example, or to yeah, to Google account is going to send that email to the SMTP gateway. So email is being sent to the SMTP gateway, and then the SMTP gateway is going to inspect that email. Is going to allow the user yes or not to send that email out to the internet. And if yes, the SMTP gateway is going to then send the email to the destination to the recipient which was, let's say, Christian, CR, at gmail.com, for example. So all traffic flowing back and forth from the internet to the, to, to the internal network and from the internal network to the internet is going to flow through those to that special SMTP gateway, which is able to understand the SMTP protocol, make sure it's confirm, con in conformance with the RFC, and then it's going to have some security policies configured, which is going to allow users or which is going to disallow users to send or receive, receive specific email traffic uh, back and forth. 